Well, you were lucky enough to play under the genius of Fabian. Is it Galti? I am Galtier. so Galtier. 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 I'm so useless. And usually I have time to prep it, but anyway. Um, uh, so he, at Mon Montpellier. But first of all, how good a coach and motivator is he? Um, he's 100% the best technical coach I ever worked with, the best attack coach by an absolute mile. Um, the way he could break down a game, um, paint a picture of how he wanted you to play. I 100% played my best rugby under him at Montpellier for those two years. Um, and yeah, he, he's done a wonderful job with the French team in terms of attack and what they do um, and really tying things up. Like obviously, it's the side that everyone talks about, the sort of crazy side of, of what goes on on a personal level. But the overriding feeling for me was, look, the best attack coach that I work with, um, but then there's the but, and th there's always going to be the but. Um, but you know, just trem a tremendous coach, really insightful, tremendous rugby IQ, um, really smart, intelligent bloke. So, uh, played the, the best rugby that I managed to get was was under him definitely, and it was Mario Desmo was the assistant coach as well at Montpellier. Well, I suppose you can have a guess at what my next question is going to be, but I do want to know if you have any stories on how crazy and erratic he was. <laughs> at times there's a few like we had guys like Ivan Watram like it was essential bullying with, with, with some boys which guy Ivan Watram is that ultimately ended up suffering with anxiety because he was getting treated so badly so like as a senior player group we had to go and speak to Fabian and say look you're gonna have to stop because he would rock up in his car he'd get stomach pains and he wouldn't be able to get out of the car because he was so scared of coming into the building and having to deal with the coaching group so there was guys like that he was bad with Ivan he used to like and defensively he'd like pull people into place by their ears like stand there you fat pig like I didn't tell you not two meters apart one meter apart and like drag people into place um but it was also old, old school and different levels then it came to like do you remember Lucas Amorosino the Argentinian fullback yeah. Um, who knocked Scotland at the World Cup in 2011. Um, really nice bloke, actually. Stuff like the president, who was Moed Altrad, signed him in pre-season, like it's extended his contract for three seasons. He signed on the line and then Fabian said, look, I, I haven't been part of these discussions, but Fabian loved him. It was like a no-brainer. But because he hadn't been part of the discussion, he was like, no, nah, I don't want him. You have to fire him. So like he signed a three-year contract. Three weeks later, the president had to pay him out three three years' money and send him on his way because Fabian had disagreed. Like there was just a sort of continual stream of trying to get his own way, strong personality, stubborn, um, but at the same time, a really wonderful coach. So a strange balance um, as a bloke. But look, we, we even said back then, you know, obviously it's difficult on a day-to-day -day in a club in terms of an environment, like you guys know what it's like, what you're trying to build. Year to year, it's hard graft, but he was so talented and so switched on. Back then, we were like, he'd be absolutely amazing as a national team coach because you'd dip in, you'd be with him for four or five weeks, you'd get the rugby bit, and then you'd leave. And I think that's where he's now found his balance. He, he doesn't have to work with people that he can't tolerate. He's working with the high end, the absolute cream of the crop, which is where he needs to be, and he's found his place. Um, he's been working hard to find it for, you know, for a few years, but he's there and he's doing a good job. He sounds like a very, very scary man. But um, <laughs> <laughs> well, moving on, I suppose you obviously played alongside Ryan for Scotland and Glasgow. So I would like to know what memories you have of a young Ryan coming into the domestic and the national squads. So I think Ryan arrived in 2010. I left in 2012. Um, and straight off the bat, just cheeky, just winding people up, but in a good way. Like somebody you want around a squad and that you can lift people up when things aren't going well. Um, and just fun, naughty. Um, no, yeah, you like that. It would be naughty would be the word that I would use to describe, right? Very I think people naughty. that know him would, um, would agree. Um, I remember as well, we'd like a team social. It must have been your first year. Team social, maybe 2010, 2011. I think it was, it, was, uh, it was a Christmas theme in March, wasn't it? Something terrible like that. Anyway, it was fancy yeah. dress. And I remember Peter Horn and um, Chris Fazzaro spent about a week to 10 days making sheep costumes because they're from Fife. They're from the kingdom of Fife. So they obviously love their animals on the East Coast no, of Scotland. No, it wasn't because that. It was because it was a Christmas social. So there was a ship and three sheep. Because <laughs> yeah. I was dressed as a Christmas present. We Our, our Christmas social got cancelled for some reason. So we were doing the Christmas social in March. So sorry to butt in. But yeah, the, Johnny, Johnny's forgot. <laughs> I can't uh, remember. Oh, they're from Fife. They you must blocked be it out. reenacting farmers. I think that's why they chose the sheep. Let's be honest. <laughs> Um, yeah. but that that is my lasting memory of Ryan so we had this team social um, Chris and Pete spent I think about a week with their girlfriends making these sheep costumes so like getting cotton wool 
hairspray, sticking it all on, making it nice. Um, and we're like, what are they doing? But I think Ryan was the only one that sort of caught wind of what they were doing and how much effort they put into it and also the fact it was flammable. So we go into one of the bars, the end of Glasgow, um, and Ryan finds a candle and pretty much sets half the west end of Glasgow up a light. That is my lasting memory of Ryan in Glasgow. Oh, our fallout with Scottish rugby and trying to smooth that all, all over. Um, but that's a sort of typical what you can expect from a night out with Ryan. Good fun, hijinks, and um, naughty. Definitely. I remember Chris Fazaro not having a clue what had happened because it went None up. Of us did. It went up pretty quick. The whole thing went up, it, mate. You lucky the, the street didn't go up. It was the first pub we got into as well. And <laughs> we just disappeared in flames, ripped it off, but forgot that he'd put these shorts on and done the same to the shorts. So he had taken the top off thinking he was out of it. And we all looked down and we're like, he's still on fire. And his, he had these little shorts on with them on as well. So he's pulled them down. His Willie's hanging out in the middle of the, in the pub. That was straight after I um I got buffaloed with a bottle of Listerine in your flat. Do you remember that? Yeah, someone buffaloed me taking a little swig out the Listerine bowl, so I had to down the Listerine bowl. That wasn't very nice. So what buffaloed? You're gonna to have to explain this to well, me. You know, now. you drink out your right hand. Right. Okay. And you drink Christine, a bottle. Come on, you know what buffaloed? I'm a lady. No. What so I, and I've never lady. heard of it. I never. You're I've Irish. Never, yeah, I'm Irish, but I've never heard the term buffaloed. So what? So you yeah, have so to if drink. You drink out your right hand. It's buffalo, and everyone's and you got. To, down the pine. Okay. Have you heard that? And oh, no, I have, yeah, yeah. But yeah, just... so I've obviously taken a sip of Listerine in Johnny's flat. I'm pretty sure it's... Oh, no, you used to rent the flat to the boys, so you were obviously panicking. And, yeah, took a little sip of Listerine, and then someone shouted, Buffalo! So that was when I, yeah, had to down the bottle of Listerine before that. That's probably which... That sent me on my way. It was I think, Listerine Johnny. that did it. That's right, man. Yeah. It was Listerine. 